G- give me your talk. And I was like, oh, wow, I wasn't quite yet ready to unload the talk for a molecular biologist. So I kind of stumbled through what I had, and he's kind of being kind and gracious and like, uh-huh, that's good. And then he says, well, what's your big left hook? You got to have a left hook, a big finish, right? I said, I don't have a left hook yet. He said, oh, Louie, oh, man, your left hook is laminin. And I'm, I'm totally blank on laminin. And he goes, Louie, it's a cell adhesion molecule. Protein molecule? Do you know about proteins? I'm like, no. He said, Louis, cells organize into certain molecular structures, and that determines what protein there are. There are between 10 and 60,000 proteins in the human body. We don't even know how many proteins are in the human body. But one of them is a cell adhesion molecule. It's organized into this certain structure, and that tells the cell what its job is in the body. And this one is a cell adhesion molecule. And I'm like, all right. He said, no, Louie, it's like the rebar of the human body. The steel they put in the concrete when they lay the foundations of things, it's that stuff. It's, it's holding your membranes together. It's the glue of the human body, Louie. It's laminin. You've got to tell them about laminin. And I'm like, I promise you, I'm going home and tell them about laminin. And I'm sure when I do, revival is going to sweep across the church and probably around the world when I tell them. He said, no, 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 no. You've got to see laminin. I'm like, okay. I see it. He said, no, no, no. You need to go look it up online. You need to go Google laminin. I'm like, I don't even know how to spell laminin. <laughs> Takes his card out. He writes on the back, L-A-M-I-N-I-N. I'm like, okay. I cannot wait to get to my computer and get on Google, click on images, type in laminin, and I'm waiting, and these little thumbnails come up on the screen, and I'm like... That's laminin, the cell adhesion molecule. Woo! (laughs) I am so excited. I am beside myself. I cannot believe what I'm seeing. I love laminin. I'm so fired up. (laughs) You should see laminin, I guess. That's the thing, right? Okay. Here is a scientific diagram of the laminin cell adhesion molecule that's holding your body together right now, okay? This is what I found right here. No, come on, that's crazy. (laughs) That's just crazy. I just can't believe it. I emailed that guy back so fast, I'm like, wow, 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 what in the world? He said, you want to see an actual laminin molecule? I'm like, oh, no, man. The diagram was cool for me. I'm happy with that. Don't, don't bother sending anything else. I'm like, yes! And he sends me this image, an electron microscopic image of an actual laminin protein molecule. It looks just like this. how crazy is that? That the stuff that holds our bodies together, that's holding the lining of your organs together, holding your skin on, is in the perfect shape of the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. And immediately I'm thinking about the words of Paul in Colossians 1. You know this beautiful passage where Paul's talking about the supremacy of Christ and the sufficiency of Christ. He says, for by him, talking about Jesus Christ, all things have been created, things in heaven and things on earth. All things were created by Jesus and for Jesus. But then the next verse goes on to say this. It's crazy. And he, Jesus, is before all things. And in him, that is, in Jesus Christ, all things hold together. It's right, it's right there. I'm like, of course they do. Of course they do. Everything holds together in Jesus Christ. And he goes on at the end of this paragraph, and he just tells the story of grace. He says, for God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in Christ and through Christ to reconcile to himself all things by making peace through his blood shed on a cross. 
So you're at the toughest place in your life. How can you know that God is going to hold you together and bring you through? You know because there is a cross standing over history. And it is looming over this building tonight. It is the place where the star breather became the sin bearer. Where the universe maker became mankind's savior. And it is proof that God doesn't always change the circumstances. He did not change them for Jesus on that hillside outside Jerusalem. But the cross is also proof that God always has a purpose in the circumstances and that his purpose and his plan will prevail and will triumph through any circumstances in this world.